Hey up folks, Andy here and welcome back to the boat build. So we're getting some more of this uh, water system in today. But we're going to start down the bottom there straight out the water tank. Uh, but uh, I had an accident and I broke that fitting. I was compressing that. Uh, spanner slipped off of that and all the weight went onto the plastic and it uh, snapped it. <laughs> so took a bit of getting off as well. But anyway, it's off. And that's its replacement. But straight into a push fit fitting there. Uh, we've got the water level sensor to connect. That's all push fit. And that's the gauge for it which we put wherever you want you just have to connect wires to it and uh, cheaper ships then they're only 158 pound can you believe it for that we've got this thing we meant for the accumulator and I put some padding stuff on it so it all sits on there and are nice uh, and so we'll put uh, once it straps around it when it's done but uh, that'll stop it rattling or anything there'll be no steel on steel there's a new water pump so I'll just put the filter on so that comes from the tank in inlets there through that water filter which takes a tent any large uh, sort of debris oil that's in there and these have got five compartments so you've got five compartments shoving water out and they increase the flow a lot uh, the pressure's good and what have you it's uh, what is it 15 litres a minute I think no yeah 15 litres per minute 4 gallons a minute that will shove out and I've seen one of these working and they don't have push the water out uh, so that's a good bit of kit some rubber feet and you put screws through them to fasten it down but you don't compress them too tight because it has to be able to move right so the first thing we're doing is I'm going to put that uh, threaded push fit fitting on so we'll have some slop dosh on it seal it up this blue that seals the threads We'll nip that one up, don't go mad with them, that's it. Yeah, that's nipped up, so now it's that big thread into that. Tight up that. Now we've got covered in guns. So the next thing I want on here is I want to be able to isolate that right at that point there. Right. But also I want an easy access to isolate the system. Uh, sort of everyday use or weekly use or whatever. So I'm having a gate valve for that which we'll put out here and I've got one of these full bore service valves now the full bore meaning that they're not reduced the water uh, flow doesn't reduce in there whereas the cheaper ones do these are about four quid a piece the cheaper ones are like five for ten or something but these full flow ones just don't reduce the, the water flow you know so I want one of them there so, should it, anything go wrong with all this lot, I can isolate it right back at that tank. So we need a, 
we're going from a push fit to a compression there. Maybe that was there. Right, I'll just have a play around with that. I see what we can do. Okay folks, we're back here the following morning. I've removed this uh, section here because we get a bigger area then so it gives a bit more room which makes all the difference to get everything in. Right, we'll crack on with it now and I'll be able to get that uh, expansion tank back there. So gives it gives enough room then for everything. Okay, so I was trying to use those braided hoses to give slow curve to the water flow, but we're going to have to use these uh, these uh, right angle fittings. Uh, so they're the PEX fittings, because there's just not got enough room to turn the pipe on a slow bend and what have you. And <coughs> that's the only area we've got, because the rest of that's his drawer storage and what have you, so we can't go in there. So. It'll be like that now. Now it does say like uh, flexible possible water hose, pet piping is recommended instead of rigid piping at pump, so we're not using copper pipe. If you choose to use rigid pipe, provide a short length of hose between pipe and the pump to avoid noise and vibration. So this is all done with pecs now, so that will stop the noise and the vibration. It's uh, you know because it's flexible. So that's it, it's a compromise, like life, it's a compromise, we can't have everything we want. So I can turn that easy in there now and um, then come back out from the accumulator to the piping and we're underway. So we're going to do it that way and that's it. Right, so we've got that just tack down with some small screws into that for now. Now we're going to come along and it tees into that vessel there. And we also can get the um, isolating valve there. And then the front of this, which will be uh, wooden boxed in, it'll either be a little do uh, door or something, or a hand, you can put a hand in and turn that off. So I need to join that to that and we'll turn that corner into that. Right, we've done it. It's all in. I'm not uh, tightening everything up yet, because you never know. But that's going to work fine now. It's all, we've secured it down where the valve is. There's, because it's on rubber feet, there's play there to take vibrations out. 
the accumulator's got to play in it so it should stop any kicking and what have you. We'll have a look. So we're coming out the tank there. We've got that service valve there. Should we need to disconnect everything here? We've got to physically be able to turn the water off from that tank. Otherwise, it's getting a pump out and draining it. So we're coming on from there. That's a sensor for the water tank level. And then we come along to the filter there. So any debris in the water or anything. It's a big filter, I'll take that out. Come along through there. That's his on and off valve for everyday stroke weekly use or whatever when you leave the boat alone you don't want to leave the water on and then through that T up into the expansion tank so there's a rubber balloon in there type thing and it uh, fills up with so much water 3 litres I think and then see what pressure from that to diaphragm all the time pressing on the water so if you want a bit of water out the tap it will just let you have a say three litres or a couple of litres and it doesn't start the pump up every time it just accumulates it in there and then we're coming along here right so I'll just leave that as that is at the moment because I'm not sure if it's running down the middle of here or down the back of there I'll have to put this unit in figure that out best way and then on the front here We'll do a frame and a, a door so we can use the valve easily. So that's that in there, thank goodness. A lot of things it takes a bit of uh, fiddling about and working out, but you get there eventually. Just keep trying, you know, to work out. So although we've not used the braided and the bends on it are tighter bends than I wanted, but that's it. It's a it's a compromise, isn't it? So. That's that bit in. So we can carry on now and go through the rest of the boat, get the rest of it in and the Ebbers Packer 22 mil for the rad and everything like that. So we'll move on to that. So carrying on with this supply now then, 15 mil wise, which is what we've got here. But we've also got 22 mil to put in for the uh, radiators. Right, so we're up to this point here. So we've got cold up to there, so now we've got to run cold round to the kitchen sink, cold round to the toilet, and then hot round to the kitchen sink. That's it, 15 mil wise, that's it, we've run it round then. But then from the chlorifier, sorry, from the Abbasbacker, which is in the engine bay, we come after that with 22 mil. Well, we've come out to that, the, the joints are on the bulkhead here and then we're going to join on to 22mm for the radiator system so we've got three rads, one in the saloon, one, one in the bathroom and one in the bedroom so that's going to be flow and return 22mm on Eversbacker and then you've got to tee off of that 15mm to the rads or the matrix things, whatever you use but you've got to run it in 22 mil for the Ebbers backer. Right, so that's what we're doing next. We're going to get finish this 15 mil first, and then we'll do the 22 mil. Come on, get on. Right, so we've got the cold and hot there. So that feeds all that lot. Now we need to continue it round here and down this wall. So we'll do the same thing, we'll put some clips on and then uh, we'll put the pipe in on the corner there. It's all, we're, just, we're not kept anything together, we just leave enough pipe there to do whatever we need to do when it all gets connected up to the chlorifier and what have you. So that's what we'll do in now, just run these pipes round. Hi folks, we're just trying a little idea out, David uh, has suggested this, that uh, we have to straighten this pipe out, it's 22mm packs, work, should work the same with 15mm, so we're going to try and straighten it out, 
because it's hard, it's, it's a hard thing to straighten out. And all we're doing is pulling it through a hole, which is there, right? So pulling it through that hole should straighten it out, give us some straight lengths. So it goes back, but it doesn't go back as big. Yeah. So. But on a warmer day, like I said, how much more do you reckon you need? I need two or six metres. Right. <laughs> so, you need to get a bigger tape. Yeah. These one of them's always best uh, bench, which is. A big Yeah, it's eight metres, I think. Also gets you <laughs> also gets you warm, doesn't it? You know what it wants? What? The deeper one, I bet. Probably, yeah, yeah, it might yeah, might might be, make it a bit better. So you're pulling it over a greater area. Yeah. Right? We're getting the piping, run it straight as we can, but because it's, it is cold, you know, weather, and uh, it's taking some straightening out, but it's straightening out enough anyway, so we'll just get the inserts in and we'll get it all laid in. Right, that's that one in. 
that's all the, the uh, central heating radiator stuff first fixed in the 22mm. We have got to tee off to the rads with 15mm then, but you have to do the whole circuit in 22mm for the Eberspacker specs. So we're running down that cabinet there with the tank in the water tank that's going in there, the full water tank. And then we'll come along there and there'll be a rad on there under the step. Just a small rad. And then we have to connect those two ends into a loop so it's a flow and return. So it comes out the Everest back and flows along say the top one there, the top part, all the way along, tees off into the rads and then it has to loop back into the bottom one. So in here we've done the same. There's that ends there, there for the where the rad will go on this wall. So we'll be teeing off of them and then we'll join up to the other bits there. We'll have a rad on wall there, so we'll be teeing into that. That's as the end of that for the hot water to the sink. So we're coming along all the way along. Now these are all the ends that tie into the into the uh, water tank and the Ebers pack and everything all coupled up there from those fittings that are coming through they all tie into that and that's it all sort of first fixed now what we can do is just finish in here we can put this pump in we can put uh, all the hose on then so that'll come up ready to be taken outside uh, but anyway, we'll get that done and that's finished then. So I've been waiting for these blanks to uh, take that out of commission. That port, the silicon blanks from automotive shop. So they're all up to 180 degrees they'll stand. So we're not going anywhere near that. The thought coming out of a shower, you know. Uh, we're not using that. So we've got that one now needs putting onto the shower pipe that comes out of the gully there and then that that goes up to our pump. That one uh, that's it and it's we plug this in so we'll we'll get this in and that's out of the way. Right, that's in. We 
just got these to connect. Got all the plumbing's in for that now. Up to there anyway. And it's up from up from there. Out the boat. We don't know where that'll be yet, so we'll just that's the last connection anyway. Once the sink's in and everything will come into the same outlet as the sink. And the uh, sewer skin fit in and out. So that should work fine now. We'll tie this up neatly somewhere. It's all in. Right, so that's as much as I can do at the moment. We now need radiators. So we'll get them in the next couple of days and we'll get the rads on then. And carry on, get this fitted out. A bit, we have been just making a a template or a child piece for the lighting. You can see it up there. So that's what it's going to be like. That's just MDF. So but basically, our lighting all run across the all the wires in there. Anyway, that's it for now. So thanks everybody liking, subscribing. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed and leave us a like. Help the channel along a bit and it's much appreciated. Alright, see you later. Ta-ra!